Ladies and gentlemen, we've checked to see that your seatbelt is not securely fastened. The window shades are open. Seats are actually being placed in front of you. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Whoa. So this is the struggle we have been dealing with for the last three months. We have so much stuff and we're traveling to new countries all the time. Look at this. We have two carry-ons, this big checked bag here, almost 50 pounds, and then we each have a backpack. So when we first thought we were going to be traveling, there were so many things we thought we were going to need. That's why we didn't want to make a packing video at first because we knew we were bringing more than what was necessary but we also knew that we were going to be coming back to the United States after three months of traveling, which would give us a true feeling on what stayed in those suitcases all the time and what we wore during the trip. So I think we're going to start by going through each of our carry-ons, which have only our own things in them, and go through and just really evaluate what we want to keep or maybe what we haven't worn or what we haven't used and get rid of that. And then the checked bag is more of like our larger liquids that we can't carry on, camera gear that just doesn't really fit well in a smaller bag, et cetera, et cetera. Let's do this. So let's open them all up. Ooh. So as you can see, there is so much stuff. Since our objective is to reduce this mess to this big suitcase and one carry-on, we're gonna make a couple piles here. One pile is going to be absolutely not, we're not going to bring it with. And that's going to go in our handy dandy storage unit. And then uh, we're going to make a pile for if there's room, we'll keep it. And then we'll make a pile for 100% we need it. Okay, I'll do it. Wow, so Ooh. somehow we have so much more stuff than we thought you really get an idea of how much stuff we had. Like, I can't even believe this. This looks like when we were moving out of our apartment, like with how much stuff this is. Like, I can't even believe how we even fit that in the suitcase. Speaking of the suitcases, so you guys know what we travel with. This is an away bag. It is a very durable bag that has come with us for the last three months and still looks almost brand new besides a couple scuffs on it. And it's more than like a normal suitcase would cost but given it's like durability this will last you maybe 10 or 15 years especially for people that aren't traveling full-time like us versus spending half of this on a normal suitcase which will last you maybe five years so up front the cost is high but long term it's going to last you longer that was a hard thing for me to swallow but now that i've experienced it myself i personally love these suitcases okay so now I first am going to take you through my more clothing, toiletry, personal items, and my yes, no's, and maybes. And Mac will then do the same for his, and then we will jointly kind of explain and go through our miscellaneous joy items that we use. So let's first start with the toiletries, because girls, we know those are important. So I have, of course, brush, mirror for standard hair, makeup if you need it. And then blow dryer, like a really mini travel blow dryer. And this thing is powerful. Typically places we'll stay will have blow dryers, but I just have one on standby just in case the place we're staying doesn't have one. And I'm in a pinch and I need one and it's so small and compact if it's perfectly. And then I have a curling wand and a straightener. Toiletry bag that has my toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, face wipes, moisturizer, etc., etc. Extra contacts. Went ahead and ordered like a six month supply back before we left. And then laundry bag, of course. So shoes were tough for me. I initially wanted to bring like way more shoes. And I was like, okay, Chelsea, you're gonna have to cut some. You just like tone down the girl and just really bring what you need. So I have, of course, my tennis shoes for mainly if you them for exercise, but then of course if we're going hiking or doing something more outdoorsy. And then I have my pair of standard walking sandals. So these are what I wear most of the time. They're a brand called Suft. Um, they're super comfortable. Like I've walked miles and miles and miles in these and had no issues. And then I wanted kind of a heel, you know, for maybe those nights out or dinners where you're still comfortable, you can still walk around, but you have that little bit of heel to kind of get a little more pep in your step. And these are again, super comfy, squishy, fun, easy, neutral color. And then I have a pair of flip flops, actually. Workout clothes. So I have two sports bras, two pairs of shorts, one like nicer kind of workout 
shirt that I can use to work out and it's also good for like outdoorsy excursions. I have four pairs of socks and so far I definitely use them. Sometimes I wish I had a little more workout gear if I'm being really good in that week, but it's been fine and it's plenty. And then bathing suits, my first packing cube. I have five bathing suits. I have of course like the triangle style and then I have some that have more of like the chest covering. So if I get a little sunburnt, um, and I have a one piece too, if I get a little sunburnt or it's more appropriate for the activity that I'm doing, I will switch into those. So I have a couple different options, but five bathing suits overall, and that's been great. And then I have my second, second packing cube, which is full of my rompers and jumpsuits. So I have like short sleeve rompers, you know, easy to wear, easy to walk in. You don't have to worry about like a dress. Jumpsuits the same. I like to travel in them. You know, they have the long pants, really comfortable. So it's nice to have a couple options, especially if it's a chillier night. So you have the option of long pants, but still short sleeve with the jumpsuits. And then to that, I have a couple long sleeve rompers. So still, if you want to be maybe a little more dressed up, or you want a little more coverage because it's kind of a chillier night, you have your long sleeve rompers. Couldn't recommend them more. Multi-purpose, cute and functional. And then I have my last but not least packing cube that has my dresses. I have three dresses and I just kind of interchange between them all. And then I also have my comfy, like sleeveless workout shirts. I can work out on them or I lounge around, you know, the wherever we're staying in them, sleep in them. So actually my no pile of clothing, as you'll see, was pretty small. So that is my yes pile and I really do wear it all. I've taken a couple things to my no pile, which is what I'll get to now, but you'll see it's only a few. Okay, so onto my no pile. So as I said, it's pretty small. So I actually had more long sleeve, kind of nicer shirts for maybe wearing with my jeans um sweater because when we were in europe at first we were in places where it would get maybe chilly at night or it was starting to get a little cold so i had these options but now that we're going to be in war more warm hotter climates for the next six months the next foreseeable future at least for our travels these are going to stay at home so it's actually freeing up a decent amount of space one of my workout shirts that's long sleeve, again, for the same reason, I shouldn't need it because we're gonna be in warmer climates. And also I think I have enough. I don't really wear it often anyway. And then a couple pairs of socks that were worn with like my little booties are not necessarily workout socks. So that's small, but it still counts, still taking away stuff. So those are my no. So again, as I said, a few, but I really do wear everything I'm bringing. And then I have a couple maybes. So first of all, my rain jacket. Initially we were like, okay, we'll definitely need a rain jacket. Let's make sure we have rain jackets. This one's really cute, but it's not very functional. The hood doesn't really stay up in the wind. I discovered in Iceland, which wasn't very uh, pleasant, but it's something that I know we'll need it, of course, at some point, but we haven't really worn it at all. I think we've just gotten lucky or we've kind of avoided the rain. Um, so this is a maybe because if I have this space, maybe I'll bring it. Otherwise you really can get everything you need typically wherever you are. So if I find myself or we find ourselves in a rainy place, we can always go buy a temporary poncho or a rain jacket that we can carry around. So we'll see a maybe. And then I have pants. So I just brought one pair of jeans again for those uh, climates where it was warmer during the day, but might get chilly at night, or we were um, in Europe until the end of October, so it was starting to get cold. So I just had one pair of pants and a couple pairs of leggings, one that I'm wearing now, my comfy ones, good for travel and just kind of lounging around. And then another pair that I just haven't really worn. So these are maybe, but will probably be a no, the jeans too, because I don't see myself wearing them, especially when we're gonna be in these warmer climates. And that brings me to my last clothing maybe which are the shirts that would go along with the pants if I were to bring them. So I do have some really cute tops that I could wear with the pants. They'd make really cute outfits, but I just don't know if or when I'd be wearing jeans again. But those are my yes, no's, and maybes. Hopefully, if you're planning to full-time travel, even planning you know, a week-long trip, this helps you at least narrow down what you really need and kind of decide what you want to bring. All right, now onto my stuff, and it is trimmed you'll see that my pile of stuff that I got rid of is quite large. But for shoes, 
I have two pairs of Allbirds. They look quite similar, but one of them is more of like a hiking gym type, I guess, like gym looking shoes. And the other ones are more like walking around the city slash lounging or something like that, you know. Uh, but the reason why I chose Allbirds, they were slightly more expensive than I would normally pay for shoes. But I had read so much from other travelers that they have huge benefits. They're ultra lightweight, which is great for packing. They squish together quite easily here. So as you can see, this is one pair of shoes and it's the thickness of probably what one of your shoes would fit in a normal suitcase. And then the, the material is really stretchy and that gives your feet more of like a breathing feeling. And then I guess the last benefit I would say about these is they're machine washable and you can wear them without socks, but you definitely need to wash them after. And uh, so they're great shoes. I'm keeping both of these because I just use them often enough to make them both worth traveling with and they're light. The next is my shorts. I have two pairs of like standard H&M khaki shorts. So I have two swimsuits. I'm not going to take them both out, but as you can see. So I have a couple of dress shirts. Two of them here for the formal times. One pair of black jeans. About six and a half pairs of boxers because one of them's a little torn. So it'll be six after this video. And then here's my main thing of shirts. I have a few different types of shirts in here. I have more of my like plain shirt which is actually right now a potential maybe for me because I only really wear it on the plane. You can't go anywhere without a Hawaiian shirt. A couple H&M polos, a thin Calvin Klein shirt, just like a plain, more of like a nice material white t-shirt. Goes with everything. And then my workout clothes, I only have one pair of gym shorts and then one tank top. That's what I work out in always. Obviously I wash it. So that's about like seven shirts that I have, seven or eight if you count the tank top, plus the shorts, and that covers everything. Last one here, I have about five pairs of short socks and I have like three or four pairs of long socks. I might reduce the long socks though. And last but not least for my personal stuff, just a standard bag of toiletries to reduce the amount of volume and just because I don't like shaving cream, I always use the electric razor and then the rest of your standard toiletries and it all fits in here quite easily. All right, so I showed you the two dress shirts I'm keeping. These two I wear the least amount, so I'm cutting out two dress shirts here. I'm cutting out this red polo. I only wore it once every probably like two weeks, and I want to save some room so I can buy some local clothes for fun here and there if I want to. And then I had just another miscellaneous long sleeve I never wore. Brown belt, as you saw, I only have those black pants, so they don't go together. These shorts I don't really like. The pockets are shallow, which is a higher risk of theft. I had a white pair of jeans here that were good for some occasions, but not many. White pair of high waters, also good for only some occasions, not enough occasions. Khaki pants, a little bit harder to part ways with because I do really like these pants a lot, but when we transition to a warmer climate for most of the time, it's just gonna be quite rare that I'm going to be wearing these. Next one here is my rain jacket. It's just, it takes up too much space for the amount of rainy days we run into. The next thing I'm removing are my Clark boots. As you can see, they take up a lot of space. Even if they're scrunched down like this, there's just not room in the suitcase if we want to downsize. Once again, for the millionth time, warmer climate, won't be wearing these. Last but not least, water shoes. These things are only a few bucks when you buy them in the location you need. We've had them for three months. This is the most I've seen of them in the last three months. So I figured it's time to leave them back here. And if I really need them for a specific excursion, I'm sure I can find them for pretty cheap. So now we're gonna run through the rest of the yeses for just kind of like other miscellaneous stuff that we both have. So first two, we have these like very compact towels. They're like the size of a normal beach towel and they're super helpful because not all the Airbnbs or hotels we stay at provide beach towels. Medicines. So we won't go into the detail of what's in here, but basically preventative uh, travel focused uh, for where we're going. So in each one of our bags, we keep a series of different documents. The reason why we have copies in each bag is you never know if your bag's going to get lost, delayed, stolen, burned, whatever might happen to it. You need to minimize the risk of not having the stuff you need. And so in each bag, we have a copy of our travel insurance, a little brown envelope in each one, a photocopy of our passport, a credit card, a debit card backup. Speaker, definitely it takes up some space, but we love it, we use it all the time. We when you're on the plane, you get those customs, papers, and they don't always have extra pens, 
then you have to wait in the long customs line and then they don't always have and so having your own pen is always very nice to be able to fill out your forms quickly or for whatever else you might need it next one here is the sewing kit it takes up like no space in the suitcase so the next thing here is a gopro like selfie stick along with a like piece that attaches to it that allows it to float you can attach it to your phone or gopro which is really nice because if you're swimming or you jump in and you happen to let go of your gopro this will make sure it doesn't sink to the bottom of whatever ocean river or body of water you're at and it floats right back up to the top so very useful to have next one you always need a converter obviously when you travel you need to plug in your stuff Unfortunately, this one is just a Euro slash a couple countries in South America, and it's not interchangeable. So we're swapping this out with a power strip that can have a few different plugs plugged into it, as well as three or four USBs at any given time, as well as an interchangeable face for multiple countries. And then a handy dandy hidden wallet. You basically put it under your shirt, strap it. Where'd it go? In a couple different countries we've been to, it's come in handy where pickpocketing's a more common thing. So last but not least in our section of yeses, we have basically our consumables. We have bug spray, which we haven't really used it yet, but once you're in warmer climates, which we're about to be in, typically you'll need some handy dandy bug spray, shampoo, conditioner, face wash, toothpaste. Rather than get the travel size items, which obviously would save a lot of space because this takes up a lot of room. And then we also have, right now it's in the maybe pile, but just because we want to downsize our amount of sunscreen. So it's, it takes up a good amount of room, but we'd rather take up the space and have the bigger containers because the travel size are so much more expensive. And then last but not least, more for me, well, Mac likes to have clean clothes too, but we usually keep a couple travel sized. We will use travel sized detergent because it's hard to find a non giant thing of actual detergent. And then a couple laundry bags, which girls, you may relate with this a little more for your delicates. I use them every single time we do laundry. So they're definitely yes for me and they're really compact. And then a quick tip, you've seen a lot of plastic bags it help separate things. And then of course, if the liquids leak at all, it doesn't get all, get all over your stuff if you have it in a plastic bag. Quick tip is to leave just a little hole at the end. So that way you're able to fold, you're able to squish and all of the air comes out and you really save a lot of space that way. You don't have to worry about air bubbles. And that concludes our yes pile guys. So this is everything that is a definite coming with us. Our no pile you've already seen is pretty big, so we'll go through that at the end, but we're feeling pretty good right now, at least, about being able to downsize a suitcase. And now we'll go into our maybes that will go in if we have the room at the end of divvying all this up amongst two suitcases. Girls, a couple more things. So I have my nail polish here, my extra favorite toner and moisturizer. Going forward, I'm not gonna keep extras because you really can't typically get what you need wherever you are in the world. So this will be downsizing. It's in the maybe pile right now because I'm going to take out some of the nail polish colors I have and things. But just something to keep in mind that don't necessarily bring a bunch of extras because you can typically get everything you need everywhere you go. Last but not least, my little jewelry box. It's really small and compact, but I found that I really haven't I've worn jewelry, but I pretty much wear the same thing all the time because I'm typically casual, we're moving around. So we'll see if it makes it. I have to think about it a little more. All right, so I'll show you some of the other maybes I have in here. Something I'm gonna mention is I'm not gonna go through every piece of camera gear that's a yes that I'm bringing with. Currently, I'm in the process of changing some of them out, trying out some new pieces of equipment. And so if you guys are really interested on a video on what is all the camera gear that I'm traveling around with, just leave a comment below and I will definitely make one. But at this point, I'm just gonna focus through the maybes and the no's on what's being taken out so you can get an idea of what else we're removing from the current stockpile. So this first one right here, you can't really tell what it is, but it is my backup drone. It is a Mavic Pro Platinum. And this was like one of my first drones that I had, a great drone, a great starter drone, but I really only held on to it just in case I crashed my main drone. Now I know in whatever amount of time when I crash my drone, I'm gonna wish I had it, but I'm pretty sure that I don't wanna travel with it. It's just, it takes up a lot. Next up here, all of this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we have so many cords. 
So many, so many backup chords. Obviously, some of them are a yes, some of them are a maybe, but we're just trying to reduce it. And so here's a bunch of no's. Once again, there's some camera gear in here that I wanna share with you that I'm getting rid of. Uh, the first one I will show you is the Unipod. It's basically a tripod with one leg, as the name says. Yeah, I just never used it, so that's a no. The next one here, this funky looking thing, probably only videographers know what this is, but basically what this does is it stabilizes the camera. And if any of you have watched the previous videos, they're not all super stable. Uh, my intent was to make them more stable, but this unit, it has a piece in here, a few pieces that makes it extend this long. And so this doesn't fit inside my camera backpack, which if I can't fit it in my camera backpack, it doesn't come out for the day of adventures. And so this thing has sat in the bag for three months, not used a single time. So next here, Big earphones, great for plane rides. Don't take enough plane rides to make it worth it. So I'm using only my AirPods. Mouse would be productive to use, but I just never use it. This phone case, it's a waterproof phone case. It's technically a yes in the yes pile, but I'm getting a new phone here soon. So it's a no for that reason, but I recommend getting a waterproof phone case. An extra pair of sunglasses I never wore, easy no. And then this USB hub with a US plug. This goes back to the converter slash power strip I was telling you about. This thing, it has six USB hubs so I can charge a lot of stuff, but now I'm getting rid of this because we have the one unit that checks all of the boxes. And then some non-electronic stuff here is my neck pillow. Great neck pillow if you're in the market for one. It takes up not that much space and it basically like sits on your side so you can sleep like this on the plane. It, works really well and I've gotten a lot of great use out of it. Uh, biggest thing is, is I mainly only use it on long haul flights. Otherwise, usually I'm editing videos or doing something else on the plane, so I'm not sleeping very much. So I don't get enough use out of it to make it worth the cut, but I definitely will miss it. Along with the eye mask, I didn't use this one very much either. So initially we were, and we still are, of course, into safety and making sure we are smart wherever we go in the world. Um, but we purchased a few more precautions before we left that we actually haven't used. So this funny looking contraption is actually a lock that you can use on doors. So if you were staying in an Airbnb whose door maybe didn't lock or the lock was broken or whatever reason, we had this on standby as a fail safe. We've never used it. I don't see us needing it. So that is now a no. And then we also bought this pack safe which you can attach around a bedpost or uh, something that's attached to the wall and you can lock like your laptop or your camera when you're leaving your hotel room just as a little bit of extra security if the hotel room or wherever you're staying doesn't have a safe already or you can tie it to the back of your beach chair if you want to leave your things at your chair and then go to the beach or go to the pool but again, this is something that we've never used. It's nice to have, just like the lock, but we've never used them. Don't think we will. It's been three months, so these are now knows. We brought this box of business cards, our life and focus business cards, but we haven't passed them out. We haven't really used them. Hopefully if we meet people along the way, we just try to get them to follow us, you know, if we get to talking about it, of course. Uh, we don't push ourselves to people. Luggage scale. This was great when we were first getting going because we have, as we said, our checked bag was close to 50 pounds, if not right at, or a little above 50 pounds. So it was nice to have to kind of know when we need to shuffle. But now that we've been on the road for three months, we know roughly what is gonna go in each case and we haven't had any issues with weight. Fan. So this is a portable fan that you can clip on like your backpack or we've clipped it on like a bus seat before, even on a bed where you didn't have air conditioning. I have one too, we each got our own, so I'm gonna keep mine. It's a yes for me because when we have needed it, it's been so great. But to have two, I mean, maybe if Max lucky, I'll share mine with him. But so this is his technically, but moved it to a no because we really haven't used it that much. And guys, that is the last of our no's. So guys, as you can tell, we have so much stuff and it was hard to part ways with some of the things. There are some we're gonna find out if we're parting ways after we go ahead and try and fit it in one full-size checked suitcase as well as one carry-on bag. And like I said at the beginning, we do have the two backpacks as well that we're able to fit a lot of camera gear that we're not going to review in this video. 
So we're going to go ahead and see how much we can fit in there to see if our hypothesis of fitting everything in two suitcases instead of three is possible. So fingers crossed, but we'll see you at the end. All right, guys. Wow. In the last probably like five minutes, we took all of the S's and it was pretty easy to pack it all in. So right now we do, disclaimer, have a couple camera items that Mac needs to, as he was saying, he's switching out some things that still have to go in this bag, but there's definitely room. So right now we're just gonna weigh it with our handy dandy scale and see how much weight we have to spare. All right, zeroed out. Wow, guys. 36.22. What do you say to that, Mac? That is a good step and it fits. Just have, yeah, probably another eight or 10 pounds worth of stuff that's gonna go in there. Fingers crossed, but I think we may have done it. It's all in there. I must say it feels good because I just know how many struggles we ran into carrying three suitcases, full size suitcases, plus our backpack up and down different staircases where they didn't have escalators or elevators. And not only is it tiring, but that's also dangerous to be carrying up, you know, really, really heavy bags when you're already exhausted from traveling. So I'm proud we were able to accomplish the downsizing. I honestly was skeptical. And to be fair, I didn't get rid of as much as Mac. Overall, feels really good, feel accomplished. And yeah, here we go, onward with two rolling suitcases. So that's pretty much it from this video, guys. I know it felt kind of long. We just wanted to give you an in-depth overview of what is actually in our suitcases. We get that question here and there, and we wanna just be able to share this video with whoever is interested in what you need to pack for full-time traveling. But in reality, you really don't need much when you're staying at different accommodations. They have towels, they have soaps, they have you know all different types of amenities that you might need in Airbnbs. You can get all the kitchen equipment. And so it's, it's really nice though. I must say it's quite freeing to be living the last three months with such a little amount of stuff when we can just pack our bags in now a quick 30 minutes, previously mm -hmm. an hour and 30 minutes, and we can just go to the next destination and feel at ease when doing it, which I'm really excited for. And of course this video would not be possible without our amazing friends, Ross and Becky, letting us completely tear up their living room, <laughs> tear up our suitcases. Thanks. We have had a lot of people, or I've had a lot of maybe more girlfriends be like, two, three suitcases? You're traveling around the world with only three suitcases? <laughs> like, and I'm like, yeah. And you really do at first, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like I was saying about the shoes, I wanted to bring like six pairs and now I only have three and I wear like one of them mainly. And you really, you realize like, probably at home you have a closet full of stuff, you only wear a certain amount of things. And that's, I haven't really felt like I've missed really anything yeah guys so thanks so much for watching the video if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like that video give it a thumbs up and comment why you didn't like the video and uh, if you want to see more videos like this or cool travel places exciting travel tips many great things to do in destinations all around the world hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video